Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Julie and on today's video, I have 15 trash to treasure DIY inspiration projects for y'all. Hopefully using items you already have laying around the house. We are going to take these everyday items and turn them into high-end Christmas home decor. And actually a lot of these projects I think you could use year round. I am also doing a giveaway in today's video, so y'all make sure you stay tuned to get all the details on that. We have 15 projects to get to. I think y'all are gonna absolutely love this video. So let's go ahead and get to work. We've been changing out all the light fixtures throughout the house and these globes were on a lot of the lights and I just thought they were so cute and so pretty and just knew I could do something amazing with them. I sprayed two of them white with chalk paint and my plan was to wet distress them, but I think they look so beautiful in white that I'm gonna keep some glass, some white, and then wet distress some of them also. I didn't have any of the materials to try this, but I also thought doing these in a mercury glass look would also look amazing and so high end. Now I'm going to take some jute twine and just wrap it tightly many times around the top. Then I hot glued the twine on each side to secure it in place so that I could create a hanger for this piece. These turned out even more beautiful and more high end than I even could have imagined. And they are the perfect ornaments to add to my tree since I did not put any string lights on. I can grab some LED tea lights to put in these ornaments and they just give off that beautiful, soft, cozy Christmas glow. If you have a glass light cover that kind of looks like a dome with an opening at the top, do not throw it away. It makes the perfect cutest cloche. This is actually a finial from a curtain rod that was left here in the house that we purchased. And look how perfectly it fits in here, y'all. <laughs> Never throw these little finials away. You will find something to do with it. The metal finial does have a screw sticking out, so I'm going to use my metal jigsaw blade and cut it off with my jigsaw. I do like this little variety pack of saw blades because they're all labeled so you know exactly which one you need for each project. And I just put the, the finial in my vise and then cut it off with my jigsaw. And now I'm going to give it a coat of chalk paint and then I'm going to lightly distress it. Once that is done, I'm just going to glue my finial to the glass piece and this will act as a handle so you can easily lift your glass cloche up and down. This turned out to be such a great looking easy project using two random items I had laying around the house. And this is something that you can change out throughout the seasons and leave in your home year around. I removed these red book covers from a book that I had used on a previous project, but I kept them because I thought I could upcycle them around Christmas time. You can sand these vintage fabric book covers for a more distressed look. So I just want to distress the edges a little bit more, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the sandpaper on the entire book because that will really bring out all the texture on this fabric book cover. I'm going to be using the IOD Sprig stamp on this one. This is one of their newer stamps and I absolutely love it. I think you could just change out the colors and you can definitely use it for any season. These are the two sprigs that I decided to use. I do not want it to go all the way to the bottom of my book cover. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of painter's tape to mark it so I know exactly what part of the sprig stamp I want to put on my book cover. I am using white IOD ink. I'm just going to apply the ink to my stamp and then put it on top of the book cover. 
you just want to lightly push on your stamp and then remove it and it comes out so beautiful and dainty. I love these sprig stamps. I want this to be a hanging piece of artwork. So to add a hanger, I am simply going to drill two holes in the top and then add some jute twine. And then I also wanna add a little bit of Christmas greenery to make this, you know, all the Christmas colors. So I'm going to add two pieces of greenery to this as well. I adore how these came out. They're so sweet and vintage looking and probably why I have such a hard time throwing anything away. I just knew I could come up with something amazing to do with these book covers. I have so many empty paint cans and I cannot bring myself to throw them away because I know there's so many things that I can do with them. I do not clean out the inside, I simply just let the paint dry. On this project, we are gonna be using the IOD Brushes of Holly Mold. You want to brush cornstarch or something like that on your mold before you put the clay and this will really help the clay release from the mold and keep all those beautiful details. I am going to be using the four different sized Christmas trees that are on this mold. So I'm just going to make a ton of them. I want enough to go around this entire paint bucket. You just want to push your IOD clay into the mold and then taking your finger, you just want to rub along the edges of the mold and it has this micro rim so it makes it really easy to push off any excess clay. And then I like to turn my mold over and just kind of wiggle it around until the clay just comes right out. And as you can see, there's just tons of details in this little tree. Now, once I have all the trees ready to go, I am going to start gluing it to the paint can. Now, I do not recommend using hot glue. I just needed something that was going to dry really quickly so I could get this project finished for the video. I recommend using Gorilla Glue and letting it dry overnight. Next, I want to paint the bucket. I mixed just a little bit of baking soda in here just to give it a little bit of texture. I am using this apple barrel paint in the paint color Arbor Green and I also put some brown in there just to darken and richen up this color. Now I'm just going to simply paint the bucket and this color turns out so beautiful. And if you are loving these Christmas trees, I have exciting news. This mold is very hard, if not impossible to find. So lucky for y'all, I have an extra one that I am giving away in today's video. All you have to do is simply comment, like, and share this video and I will be picking a winner and posting it in the YouTube community tab next week. I really like how the color came out on here, but I want to bring out all the details in this piece. So we're gonna be adding white wax. White wax is a perfect combination with molds because it really brings out all of the details. And I also think every time I add white wax to something, it just makes it look so much more expensive. So all you do is you simply brush on the white wax and then you take a paper towel and wipe it off. You can wipe off as little or as much as you want. I think this paint bucket looks so high in and adding that white wax just brought it over the edge, especially since the white wax almost makes it look like snow on the trees. It's such a cute winter cozy look. I got this Christmas tree for free and although it is very beautiful and I know trees are green, it is just a little bit too green for me. So we're gonna change it to make it more my style and also I think it will look more high end. I'm gonna use this spray snow to give it a flocked effect. I'm first gonna start by just lightly spritzing the entire tree. How I personally get free stuff is I just simply let people know what I am looking for. Most people, if they have something to get rid of, they much rather give it to a friend that they know wants it instead of donating. So if you just simply put it out there, you will probably find somebody that has what you want. 
Once the entire tree has been sprayed, I just start spritzing the edges of the branches. I do several coats on the edges, letting it dry between coats, and I think this gives it a more realistic snowed on flocked effect. Now this is not as beautiful as a flock tree you might get from the store, but for a free tree and a couple of dollars in a can of snow, I am very happy with the way that this came out. Y'all, I purchased this beautiful, huge afghan at the thrift store for $2, and I really want to put it under my tree, but it is constantly getting in a fight with my vacuum cleaner, so I'm gonna fix that today. I've had a tree box around my trees for years, long before it was even a popular thing to do because I just love the way it looks. And if you have a robotic vacuum cleaner, you need one of these. This is some free wood that I got from my neighbors. They tore down their dock and I asked them if I could have the wood instead of them bringing it to the dump. And of course they said yes, because it saved them a trip to the dump. To figure out the measurements of my box, I simply just measured the base of my tree and I'm building a box that will fit around the tree holder. My box ended up being 28 inches. I am just going to be using two and a half inch wood screws to put my box together. And then I am going to paint it white. It would also look good if you left the natural wood, but I am going for a very white look this Christmas. So everything is getting painted white. And once it's dry, I will lightly distress the box. Now my box is ready to be placed around my Christmas tree base. And then I'm just going to put the afghan inside and arrange it in a way that I think looks pretty. This box was so simple and inexpensive to make and I just love all the layers of white I have going on now and I have one less fight to break up each day. Next, I'm gonna show y'all a U-shaped Christmas tree that I've made and sold for years using free fencing that was given to me. The first thing I'm going to do is cut down a bunch of 12 inch fencing pieces. And then we are going to put together a U-shaped box using two by fours. To get the measurements on what you need, first you need to measure the base of your tree and then figure out what wood you want to use. Once you figure out how many pieces of wood you need across your box, then you can measure that and cut out your two by fours to that size. I hope that makes sense. It's really hard to give exact measurements because it really depends on the type of wood that you are using. Once you have all your wood cut out, I use construction screws to make the U-shaped two by four box. And now I am just attaching my fence boards to that base using wood glue wood glue and my brad nailer. And you're just gonna continue to attach your wood pieces all the way around your box. Most people put their trees against a wall, so a U-shaped is fine because once it's up under the tree, it really looks like a box. And it makes it really easy to slide it under the tree even after your tree has been decorated. Next, I'm going to paint the box white, just using ready to use Walmart paint, and then I'm going to lightly distress it. I want to add wording to this box. I simply just printed this out on my computer, just using regular paper, and I'm going to use carbon paper to transfer it on to the box. After all my wording has been outlined, I take my water-based Sharpie paint pen and paint on the letters. This is my absolute favorite paint pen to use and it is in my Amazon store if y'all are interested in it. It lasts a very long time and it has a very matte look to it that I really love. And this box just slides right under your tree. This box definitely has a more rustic look to it, but I love that it looks like a little fence around the tree. And as you can see, they are very easy to make and put up under your tree. 
For this project, we are gonna be using something that I know everyone has around their house. We are gonna be using cardboard. I'm using the cardboard from this beer box because I like how thin it is. I printed out these vintage postcard images from the Graphics Fairy, and I'll leave a link in the description below. I printed it out in two different sizes a normal size postcard and then a smaller one. So I'm simply just going to cut these out. I'm not gonna cut out the individual postcards yet and then I'm going to cut out a piece of the cardboard. I'm gonna be using Mod Podge to attach the paper to the cardboard. I'm actually gonna attach it to the front because I want the natural cardboard to be on the back. And honestly, this has kind of Christmas colors going on. So if a little bit of the color comes through, it's not going to be a big deal. But in the end, you could not see any color coming through. Once my bottom layer of Mod Podge was dry, I put a top coat of Mod Podge. Once the top layer of Mod Podge was dry, I used my corkback ruler and an X-Acto knife to cut it out. I just thought it would be quicker to wait till after everything was glued together to cut out the individual postcards. You could absolutely leave these as is, but I want to give them an aged antique look. So I'm gonna be applying the Waverly Antiquing Wax. I want it thicker around the edges and a little bit lighter in the middle. So I'm gonna apply it to the edges first and then to the entire piece. I'm going to dab off the excess with a dry paper towel and it wasn't coming off as much as I wanted in the middle so I just took a baby wipe and started to dab it with that. And then I went back and added a little bit more antiquing wax around the edges so I just kind of played with it until I got the effect that I wanted. To attach a hanger to my postcards, I drilled a hole in each side. You could just punch a hole or whatever. To me, drilling it was just very easy. And then I had this subscriber send me these twig branches and they ended up being the perfect thing for this because I find they ended up looking like some rusty wire. So thank you so much, Sally, for sending this to me. It definitely came in handy for this project. And I'm simply going to put it through the holes and then twist it around to keep it in place. These came out so great. This is totally my style. And I was thinking this would be a great project for kids. You could have them color a picture before you Mod podge it and turned it into an ornament. Pickle jars are a must keep item. They are the perfect shape and size for so many different projects. We are going to be using brown lunch bags that you can get for pennies at the store. I'm gonna start with the smaller pickle jar. I put it inside of the brown lunch bag and then I put a rubber band over the top of it and then I am going to roll the lunch bag down until it is even with the top of the pickle jar. I put the bigger pickle jar in the bigger lunch bag, but it still had a good bit of room around the pickle jar, so I decided to stuff it with plastic bags. And then I put a rubber band over the top of the jar, but there wasn't enough room to roll it down on this jar, so what I ended up doing was actually putting the bag inside and taping it. You could also hot glue it as well. And to hide the rubber band, I just took some jute twine and wrapped it around the top and tied it with a little bow. To embellish these, we are gonna be using the new Merry and Bright IOD stamp. I really wish I had an extra one of these to give away to y'all, but they are completely sold out. I could not find any more. These are so cute because they kind of look like the crockery stamps, but they're Christmas themed. So I'm gonna be using the IOD ink in the color tomato, and I'm gonna ink these up and stamp them on the bags. I'm doing the, it after, even though it's a little bit harder to stamp around its surface because I wanted to make sure I got these stamps in the middle of the bag. Wow y'all, who would have thought pickle jars and brown lunch bags could look so high end? And even if you didn't have stamps to embellish this, I think it would look amazing plain. I absolutely love the way this came out. 
All right, y'all, this is a trash to treasure. We cannot throw anything away. So now I have to do something with the pickle jar lids. I'm gonna make ornaments. So first thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole. I ended up in the end drilling two holes because I thought they hung better with the rope going through two holes instead of one. I'm gonna paint the front and the back of the pickle jars black. We are gonna be using the IOD snowflakes mode for this. This is another hard to find, if not impossible mode. So lucky y'all, I have an extra one of these that I will also be giving away in this video. So don't forget to like, comment, and share this video to be entered to win. I'm just gonna put my IOD clay in the two snowflakes that I feel like would work perfectly for the size of these lids, and then you just kind of brush the excess off with your fingers, and then you turn your mold over, wiggle it a little bit, and your clay should fall right out. This is the glue that I think works best, something like this, our E6000. So I'm going to put this on my snowflakes and glue it to the lids and let this dry overnight. Once everything was dry, I want to apply white wax to the piece. These snowflakes have lots of detail, so I wanted to make sure that the clay was fully dry, so that way I didn't break the snowflake when I was applying and wiping off the white wax. I was having a little bit of trouble getting the white wax off the edges of the snowflake just because this piece is so small and the snowflake is so detailed. So if you have this issue too, you can just grab a dry paintbrush and brush some of that excess white wax off. I think these turned out really great and I really love the color combination on these little ornaments. If you use spindles for projects like me, you probably end up with all these little cutoffs that you just cannot throw away. So in today's video, we are gonna do something with these little spindle cutoffs. Bottle brush trees are so popular right now and I think they only gonna get more popular. So make sure you stock up on those after Christmas sales this year. I'm just trying to figure out which trees I want to put with wood spindles for a pleasing arrangement. And then I'm going to use wood glue to attach my bottle brush trees. The bases of these trees are round already, so I'm just going to leave them. If you don't know what spindles are or what projects you use them for, I'll leave some links in the description below. I have done so many videos using spindles. They just add so much character and charm to a piece. I absolutely love using them in my woodworking projects. I am not going to be distressing this piece, so I'm just gonna give it two coats of white paint, and it is actually really easy to kinda of scooch your paintbrush around the base of the bottle brush tree so I can also get the stand that the bottle brush tree is on. If your bottle brush trees do not have a round stand, it is pretty easy to remove them from the base. And then you could just drill a hole and glue them into your spindle. How could you not love spindles and bottle brush trees? And if you do not have any spindles, you could simply paint candlesticks like I have in the back and it also looks really great. For this project, I am going to be using empty seasoning containers. The top just popped off of the pepper container, but the Tony Sastries was glued down, but I was able to cut around it very easily with a utility knife. For this painting technique, I'm going to be using half paint and half baking soda, and then you just want to mix it up really well. It's going to provide lots of texture to this piece and hopefully make it look like a cute little tiny crock. When I'm using baking soda and paint, I try to keep my paintbrush strokes in the same direction because you will see them and that's kind of the whole point of this. You really want to add lots of texture and interest to this piece. The first coat, you just kind of want to get it on there, let it dry, and then with the second coat, you usually get full coverage. I decided to go up and down with my brush strokes on this smaller pepper bottle. 
Can you see all that beautiful texture? You could definitely leave it like this. It looks great, but I want to give this a little bit of an aged look. So I'm going to add the Waverly Antiquing Wax mixed with some water and I'm just going to brush it on and then I am going to wipe it off with a paper towel. If you want to add a little more aging around this piece, you take a dry paintbrush and dip it in your antiquing wax, just a tiny bit, and then you want to dry brush it on your piece. I like to do just the tops and the bottom of the piece just for a more aged look. I want to add a stamp to embellish this piece, so I decided to use, I don't know if it's a deer or a reindeer, from the Merry and Bright IOD stamp. They have a bigger one and a smaller one, and I think these are the perfect little embellishment, and I stamped them in black. That way I could use these year around if I wanted to. It gives it a nice rustic look. Depending on your type of decor style, I think there's so many ways you could paint this or embellish it to fit in your style. So I hope this project has inspired you. I think they came out so cute and they will make such good floral holders year around. I feel like cookie tins is something we all have laying around. And actually, I do not mind the colors on this one. I feel like it already has a vintage Christmas look to it. So what I decided to do was just add some white wax to it because it was still a little bit bright for me. So I just wanted to tone down those colors. Now, if you have a cookie tin that you do not like the colors on, you could definitely use some of the techniques that I used previously in the videos to make over these cookie tins. I'm going to apply two layers of white wax on here and I will not be wiping it off. This was a very quick and simple project, but adding that white wax just made all the difference. I just feel like it's more something that goes with my decor now. You know, we also have to make something out of the top of the cookie tin. So I'm going to take this small little spindle and hot glue it to the top of the cookie tin. And then I'm going to paint the entire piece using the leftover green paint that I had from a previous project. This paint had baking soda in it, so it does have lots of texture. And there's also the spindles that I really want to bring out. So I'm going to add white wax to this piece. You simply brush on the white wax and then wipe it off. This makes a great little riser for your home decor, or you could do a bunch of them and do a tablescape for the holidays. Either, either way, this is a simple, easy, inexpensive project. If you have an old pot around your house that you are not using anymore, do not throw it away. We're gonna turn this pot into a faux enamel pot. First, you want to paint the entire thing black. I am just using Rust-Oleum spray paint. And then once it is dry, I'm going to paint the pot white. I'm going to be using white chalk paint and my paint sprayer to do this. Once your paint has dry, you wanna take a wet rag and bring back some of that black through, just like you would see in an enamel pot. So you wanna hit all the edges of your pot. You don't have to do this step, but if you wanted to have that high gloss look that enamel does, after you distress your piece, you could hit it with some high gloss spray paint. After I sprayed it with the high gloss, my paint did start to crackle. I don't know, sometimes this happens on metal. I'm not sure why, but I'm just gonna go with it. I think it kind of adds to the uh, rustic effect. I decided not to embellish this with any kind of Christmas on the outside and to simply fill it with Christmas items. And I think this will look great on top a kitchen cabinet all year long and you can change out the decor inside of it to go with the season. All right guys, what did y'all think of today's video? Please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite? I know 15 projects is going to be hard to pick a favorite. I'm actually, 
I never pick a favorite in my videos, but today I just have a very clear winner. It is these beautiful ornaments that I created. I just had no idea how amazing they were going to look in my house, on my tree. They are absolutely perfect. And my favorite little junk store I know has a bunch of these because I saw them the other day when I went. So after this video, I'm heading straight over there because I want enough to fill up my whole tree. They came out so beautiful. Absolutely love them. It looks like something that you would have spent $25 a piece on. So that was my favorite project today and I'm very curious to know what y'all's is. Make sure you leave a comment below. That way you can also be entered into the giveaway. I hope y'all absolutely love today's video. I had so much fun making all of these projects. If you love these kinds of videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all in the next video.